This is our planet radio. And we welcome you back to part two of our interview. We have on the line with us uh, several people tonight. You just heard the first segment with our guest, quantum healer, Chris Kaler, and Chris is still on the line with us. And um, for me, uh, it is sometimes the most difficult and yet the most rewarding conversations that I have with people who have been involved with uh, extraterrestrial contact. Uh, however, people define that because many people have different definitions of what is extraterrestrial contact. Um, some people uh, actually have had wonderful times with them and other people it's been quite horrific. I think our guest tonight is able to uh, both quantify and qualify why he needed to seek help from a healer in order to get out from underneath this. You heard us talk a little bit about alien implants and that's a subject that both creeps me out and really fascinates me. And I'm not sure which is worse. Anyway, I want to welcome to the line on this hour our guest, Whisper. Welcome. Hey, Randy. How are you doing? It's Hi, good Chris. to have it's good to have you on, my friend. And uh, you are, you know, among friends here because uh, this is a subject I take deadly serious. And I have, over the years, talked to a number of people who have had interactions. Um, Let's start by you giving us uh, an outline of your own experiences, where they began, what they were, how they manifested. Well, uh, things kind of opened up for me all in within a few days. Um, basically, I started hearing whispers, OK, just voices, but it was very light way in the background. And then all of a sudden I'm outside cutting the grass and I'm hearing full on voices like it's someone talking right beside me. And I'm like, the first thing I thought is, man, we're going to use this to save the world. And but it scared me. It scared me to death because I had no idea what it was. Um, within a day or so, I was watching a movie um, on a, an older style tube TV, mm -hmm. uh, 36 inch TV. Just it was the latest and the greatest of, of its time 12 years ago or whatever. And uh, something told me to hit pause on the TV. And there was a building uh, paused and it said, see if you can uh, move it around. So what I did is I just focused on it and started bending lines on the TV just with thought. Mm -hmm. And um, someone said, oh, I can't even remember what they they were impressed or whatever, whoever the voice was. Um, that night I went to sleep and um, something started to it felt like put a screw through three of my teeth. OK, and. Uh -huh. Um, the next day I tried the pause technique on the TV again. And when I paused it, whatever, it, it uses a photon gun hitting a, a shadow mask to create a picture. The old sure. style TV. Yeah, yeah. The old Anything CRTs. Between me, yeah, exactly. Between me and the TV, I could see them and I could see their entire face, facial out, uh, um, outline on the TV screen when I hit pause on uh, in the scan lines of the TV image. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And it, it was a really weird situation. Something attacked whatever they were in my bedroom and stabbed their eyes out <laughs> they, or was stabbing them in their, in the eyes. And they looked like grays, except one sort of had a little bit more of a hammerheady look at not exactly like the TV mm -hmm. style mm -hmm. grays, but yeah. three and a half feet tall. And, Something attacked them and they asked me to raise my hands and I knew nothing about energy or energy work. Uh, I'm, I've taken several healing modalities since then, um, just trying to figure out how I could help myself. But back then they asked me to hold my hands up and I could feel them push their face right against my hand with their eyeballs in the palms of my hands. Looking for some kind of healing and I don't know if that's why they put 
the screws through my teeth or or what but that's how it started for me and okay, then let me back you up a minute here uh, sure. the screws in the teeth are we talking this is actual physical or is this happening I in feel the it physically the threads going through the teeth which obviously isn't going to happen in a physical way because it would bust your teeth i think but i could feel them screwing into the the mm -hmm. through the back three teeth on the top teeth on the left hand side and right up into the jawbone and it and it wasn't like a with a drill it was like someone doing it almost with a screwdriver it was done very slowly like they were tuning something and uh, it, it wasn't really painful and i was kind of thinking well should i get out of bed and run or is this just too cool of an experience to because it didn't really hurt mm -hmm. it's it was just an a, a, you know obtrusion an intrusion into my personal being but it, i was kind of in a headspace at the time that i just thought it was kind of cool that they'd even show that kind of an interest um a little while later um okay i went at that point though i did seek medical help because voices were coming in left right and center once those screws went into my teeth right and i was like just overwhelmed i thought oh my god i'm nuts First thing I, I, I said, I actually booked myself into a crisis center in, uh, in the city and, mm -hmm. and got out of Dodge, saw a psychiatrist there, said, you're for sure um, suffering from a psychosis and uh, we're going to put you on antipsychotics. So I went on antipsychotics and the voices drifted back down into a whisper, um, got to a point where I could, you know, function in function normally again and then something said I want you to learn energy work and they dragged me to a particular website of a guy who teaches astral travel and stuff like that and he had a really interesting um, uh, and easy way of learning how to maneuver and work with energy and as soon as I did that something popped full on board full like full on and um, I was hearing voices and I was getting attacked and I was getting stabbed by things and feeling knives going through me. And um, it was like I awoke a bunch of stuff that was in there that hadn't hadn't gone through the proper clearing. And um, uh, I, uh, I was on an energy high for about three days and then stuff started jumping off of people into me because I was a hot spot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was working with this woman and... Uh, we, we were on a two hour car car ride from uh, a city just outside of Winnipeg, uh, heading back into Winnipeg. And we both just felt terrible. And I looked down and from my stomach to her stomach was about a, th mm, it was twice the thickness of a, of a fire hose uh, of green energy that was visible with the naked eye. Uh, like a plasma yeah. tube? Yeah. Okay. And, and all kinds of like tentacles firing off of it and all kinds of stuff. And um, as it turned out, I, uh, I found out later that as a child, she had practiced black magic and witchcraft and Satan worship and done all kinds of black magic on people on her in her town in the East Coast. And I figured that was whatever was in me doing battle with whatever she had picked up in her youth. And it turned into just like a major battle royal using our bodies as a... Um, what would the, well, as a conduit or it was kind like, of like battlefield, yeah. using yeah. us as the battlefield. And, yeah. uh, and things just got nuts from there. I was able to work for about a year. Um, and I was working at a store where I could take a customer and then actually go and lie down for an hour if I wanted. It was selling beds. <laughs> and, <Yes>. uh, <laughs> yeah. Wasn't well, those was, ones that you set buttons on to, to, to make the density different, was it? Yeah, I, yeah, we have all that. Oh, okay, we, yeah, yeah, I have one of those. <laughs> yeah, oh, the, uh, yeah, I can't even remember what it's like. Yeah, the mad sleep numbers. Sleep number bed, right? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, you're a 78, you'll sleep well tonight. <laughs> 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 um, but anyways, uh, over that next year, they started just drilling the heck out of me, and they almost set it up where they could get me to, they, they'd work a pattern on me, and... Um, I remember, remember they did it so often that I remember it being 12 or 13 steps to get me to rage out and go into this just outburst of anger mm -hmm. and, and flare energy fight psychically is what they were teaching me. <laughs> let me, and, let me get a, a time frame on this. How old were you at the onset? 33. Okay. I'm 40, I'm 44 now. Okay. Okay. So it's That's like, interesting. It's 33. Wow. Yeah. 
is when it started happening. And um, so since then, there's been all kinds of different contacts or voices claiming to be um, definitely Zetas and I can douse and see if they're there and they're there. If a reptilian jumps into me, uh, my solar plexus, the breastplate actually pops out. Okay, I can say reptilian out, hit my, <laughs> hit my leg and it kicks it right out. Because it's like what Chris was saying, once it's recognized and you ask it to leave, it has to leave. Um, I've had voices saying, uh, uh, I'm Arcturian and I've been indwelling in you since you were born. Same with Anunnaki. Um, so it's just like a myriad of, um, uh, I don't know. It's like they're portaling in and out of me, basically. And then I'm also noticing that just walking down the street, I'll start picking up imprints of right. people, almost seeing them getting sucked out of their body into mine. Yeah. It just uh, and I don't know what it is, if it's a device or just being energetically magnetic or, or what. But it's uh, I don't know. It's it's just a very weird situation. But anyways, I've, I've seen so many healers over this. One was like 600 bucks for a session. One was uh, worked with me for a, a long time and um, was, uh, you know, 85 bucks an hour doing all kinds of different stuff. I saw Chris for about five minutes and it almost brought it to a standstill with one of his tools. He gave, he just threw it at me, said, I don't have time to talk to you. Take this and, and work with it. One of the neutralization rings, it was a little six inch ring with a bunch of pins on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I On my drive home, I sat on it. And it sucked probably 80% of it out, <laughs> just like that. Wow. Yeah. So uh, it's been it's been pretty neat. But it, it, it's almost like they're passing me around a little bit. They're, it, it almost feels like it's been set up. I'm not a conspiracy theorist in any way, shape, or form. Like, I don't see myself ever wearing a tinfoil hat. Oh, that's but, good, because that's my job around here. Okay. <laughs> no offense. No. Uh, <laughs> but... Um, it's almost like they still run patterns to get me to sort of rage out. And it's almost like they do it and then they throw their enemies at me and mm -hmm. let me do the fighting for them. And which is disconcerting. It's, it, it reminds me very much of a Manchurian candidate, but on a psychic level. It's like they've trained me to be this um, psychic warrior of sorts, be it with just whatever type of energy or etheric weapon. Well, the conspiracy theorist in me says that that's where that came from in the first place. Okay. There's you a figure. huge amount of overlap between Manchurian candidate type scenarios that are real world and, and uh, alien abduction type uh, phenomena. So that's, yeah. that's a, a, very, a very dead on accurate kind of analogy. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm putting it. And it's very much like it's a psychological experiment to them more than uh, anything else. But it's um, I feel like I'm sucking in people's imprints as I walk by. But they're also it feels like they're pulling them out of me, which is really disconcerting for me. It's like they're using me as a collection chamber type of thing and then grabbing what they want and then ripping astral doubles or energetic copies and having whatever drive them around and do whatever they want because i keep on hearing from people that are claiming to be physical as well with telepathy mm -hmm. and um and they're they're saying yeah uh i'm talking to you but something that looks like you <laughs> is is here right now and so it's just all kinds of weird different scenarios like that it sounds so nutty that it's almost not nuts and i you know i'm like totally grounded person um the story's kind of neat and interesting but it's not like i'm wrapping my life around it or anything or living in some total fantasy world this stuff is happening to me and i'm physically feeling it and uh let me ask you this whisper how did this impact you physically in terms of your overall just physical health uh, I do major, major clearing work and major stress uh, management uh, with meditation and now a lot with the tools uh, that, uh, that Chris is showing you. Okay. Uh, Prior to the time that Chris worked with you, were mm -hmm. you, were you getting, uh, uh, suffering any physical side effects? Were you uh, obviously having sleep problems? Sleep problems, unable to work because they take, my, they take so much of my mental time up. And they can do things like stun your brain and, um, you know, and, and keep their little scenarios running mm -hmm. while you're while you're um, 
trying to do anything. I've, I've actually started doing a little bit of work, working for a friend for a few hours a night. And there's been times where I've sat there for two hours, unable to do pretty simple tasks while these things have, you know, basically been doing. They're basically hacking you and stealing clock cycles from your brain. Pretty much. And using me as a, as a hub is what it feels like. Okay. To, to connect to other people. Uh, whether it be for a battery to launch attacks, collect data, whatever. I don't know what they're doing exactly, but all of those scenarios have come up verbally. So, Now, in, in all of your experiences, most of this is occurring on the energetic level, and I'm not dismissing that at all because that's as real as any physical experience. Have Absolutely. you, in your recollection, any remembrance of having physical contact or abduction experiences, sleep paralysis, uh, any of that? Two nights ago, I was uh, not asleep, but very much in tune with a version of me that was on a ship um, mm -hmm. with a bunch of other people under mm -hmm. what would look like a dome, sort of like from the movie Avatar. Right. But just imagine them in a circle. Okay. And communicating with that particular aspect of me or whatever so um it wasn't a physical abduction because i was there but it's almost like they're ripping copies or making clones or something like that we'll see a lot of people that we tend to think of this as all physical and i i asked some very specific questions both because of my own experience and because over the years of interviewing people I've kind of honed in on a couple of things. Uh, it's like when Chris and I were talking in the first segment about healing and how allopathic medicine focuses on the physical component. And we right. dismiss anything outside of what would be called a real physical abduction as not being, quote, real. But what I was trying to get at with you is that this is a real abduction, in my opinion. It is no less real if it occurs astrally, energetically, ethereally, or in any other Form. Oh, absolutely. And I, I wanted, just wanted to get a sense if you had a feeling that this was maybe something that went on for a long time with you that maybe you even don't have recall of or you're getting recall or you're beginning to account for missing time incidents and things like that. A year ago, I woke up at two in the afternoon after uh, having a sleep that I didn't really remember. Mm -hmm. I went back to sleep for an hour and I woke up 10 in the morning on the same day. That's pretty missing time, dude. Okay. <laughs> but they didn't put me back right in. They never, they they never did. They back early. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are they, well, they forgot. Your, your, your insertion point supposed to be before you left. Yeah, it was. It was like yeah. uh, five hours before I left. Yeah. So... <laughs> I never told anyone that story, actually, but waking up at two in the afternoon on a day uh, where you're supposed to have something to do at four o'clock and then falling back asleep for a half an hour and waking up at 10 the same morning is a little disconcerting. But anyways, it ha I, I, nothing surprises me anymore. I've had so many wacky experiences over the last 10 or 12 years. I can't even, you know, I can't even remember half of them like something like that you would think wouldn't slip your mind but until you mentioned missing time and it, it wasn't something i was dwelling on it's just something that happened so well that's the weird <laughs> aspect of this type of experience is there's a lot of triggers to memory right and those triggers will represent uh different insertion points when you're being taken and i'm right. always interested in a specific memory that people get because it you know, it's just part of my data gathering process. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know. I, I probably got a million of them, let's put it that way, <laughs> of similar little weird experiences that have happened to me. And there's been times when they've kept me busy from the second I've woken up, uh, just mentally running whatever these scenarios are through my head. And they're repetitive, like just over and over and over and over. And the, the odd time they'll switch something out or they'll change a voice. But it got to a point where I was just listening to what they said. And then I'd be going like, okay, and now he's going to say, and now he's going to say, <laughs> you know, and um, it, it doesn't really feel like a psychosis. It feels like uh, they're running a program that's sometimes broken <laughs> uh, through me. It's, uh, there's yeah, so many weird different little scenarios but they they often keep me going first thing in the morning until the second i fall asleep non-stop and uh 
it's definitely gotten better since I've uh, uh, started working with Christopher there. So he's helped immeasurably. I'll just say this. Um, the conversation we just had is one that I have fairly often. And most people will not be heard saying this on an interview. Uh, my ratio of people who talk to me about their experiences and actually do an interview is like one to ten. Well, you'll notice the name I'm using, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And the reason for that is this can be this can be very uncomfortable. Well, I, you know, I've never really talked about it, even with Chris, not to this depth. I don't I don't have uh, I don't think he has any idea of this aspect of my story. And, uh, you know, we've always just gone to work on whatever the particular symptom of the day was. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of nice to actually talk about it. And, uh, you know, especially with someone who's had similar experiences or uh, experiences yeah. with other people. So this is awesome. Yeah. So you've been working with Chris for how long now, Whisper? Mm, four months, maybe. But uh, it's only been a couple of visits. He's actually teaching me his techniques right now, and I've bought several of the tools that he uses. Uh -huh. um, I've taken a few moda healing modalities myself, like reconnective healing, uh, pranic, uh, pranic healing, and uh, quantum touch. And what he's doing there, like when he talks about not using the hands, I think most healers are pick just about any ailment has an entity attachment to it. Just about every single one you're going to run into. And I look at the tools more as uh, using gloves to do the work right. than, uh, than wanting to even be hands on now because things are so stirred up and we're so close to the astral vibration. They're noticing us now. We're not just ghosts to them. That they're seeing many, many of us. Oh, that's a real interesting statement. We're not just ghosts to them. You see, that is something that you just put words to that's a thought that I've had for a long time that right. we don't seem as real to them in the oh, yeah. same way that they don't seem real to us. It's almost like we're dancing with some sort of ghostly image. Yeah, absolutely. And those veils are getting very thin for them. Mm. And for us. Yep. And Amen, brother. You know, and if you're into energy work or light work or anything where you're actually doing energy work, guaranteed your your chakra system is charged up and they are seeing you as a, a, a little string of lights a lot of time they've said um but they're definitely taking notice and as we just sort of move around uh you, you just got to move your head and you can I, I feel energy so sensitively i can feel when one's there and bump it i'm not actually seeing clairvoyantly most of my stuff is clairaudient Okay, so I was going to ask you if you felt energy shifts as you move around or if you oh, see ripples. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Ripples. Okay. Um, I'll see little squares moving around, mm -hmm. uh, like a white one. Like pixelations. Yeah, 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 little pixels, exactly. Um, what else do I see? Um, I, I see people's auras now like there's no tomorrow, oh, you yeah. know. And uh, not a ton of color or anything, but just uh, a clear energy band around people. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes now I'm starting to get glimpses of uh, the hitchhikers that people have, which is a little disconcerting as well. And that those yeah. tools that I call the gloves uh, are, are very good at clearing them out and getting them out of the, the higher off into higher aspects. So you're like watching the, you're watching people sometimes shift in real time. You can actually see like like the the changes on their face or not just in their field, but they will actually like shift. Oh, absolutely. And there are uh, schools of thought out there that say 80% of the emotions we feel are not our own and 50% of the thoughts we we have are not our own and it's just stuff that's coming in from everywhere now like over energized human beings but all kinds of uh uh energized astral people and astral wildlife and higher dimensional beings that are here um someone was saying uh in the 70s the uh, the u.s government had categ categorized 51 different species of alien um that have visited the planet so uh, i was just hearing recently oh, the number is much higher than that now but 250,000. yeah species give or take 10 or 20,000. Well, guess what? All of those guys, all they got to do is think about us and they're basically astrally it's, protecting here. It's like and sitting in a football stadium. 
Absolutely. How many of them get lost here or disconnected or just leave an astral imprint that, say, some little parasite can now drive around? Um, you know, like we're running into all of this. And I think, you know, they're here watching us. And of course, they got bored teenagers sitting on board playing whatever little virtual reality games are playing too, right? It's like a and Game Boy. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know what? And we're the wee bowlers, you know. <laughs> I'm glad In somebody else remembers costumes. Game Boys. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's uh, it's a pretty interesting time to be on the planet, I think. But it is for them too, and some of them are a bit bothersome. No offense. No, no, what, but it was just interesting to hear you describing things that I don't think I've talked about some of this stuff before, but you were actually triggering me a little bit. But watching people and seeing the subtle shifts that they go through energetically, but even sometimes I will see humans ripple. And it's like, it, it, it's like the energy field for a second deconstructs. Oh, for sure. Well, I think that a lot of that's the veil shifting and there are, there's more than seven chakras and there's more than three or four different bodies like Chris was saying. And, um, I think we're moving between them at times without being consciously aware of it. And I, I a lot of those ripples I think are probably that, um, actually you're changing your tuning or the energy is caught of the earth rising in vibration instead of being 8.73 shulman it's you know 9.6 or whatever and uh those little ripples are causing us to move in frequency into bodies that are already at that frequency and if you're a sensitive person like yourself you're seeing those shifts in people and yeah. it's you know it's neat <laughs> it's pretty cool <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I kind of wonder, as weird as all of this sounds and as horrible as it is to go through, if we're not forerunners for uh, this coming age that we're moving into, because it looks to me like there is no real normal scenario anymore for what we're shifting into. And how do you feel about that? Because obviously, you know, you're being exploited by forces beyond yourself. But at the same time, you know, just talking to you, listening to the resonance of your voice and kind of sensing your field, I get the sense that despite all the madness, you somehow have managed to hold on to a core of yourself that's, that's, that's grounded. Oh, for sure. For sure. And I think 99% of it is... As the energies move up, our abilities to manifest are have increased way, way higher. And a lot of what we're manifesting is basically psychic garbage um, <laughs> because yeah. it's happening in a thought world, but it's not going away like it used to. There's enough energy there to keep all those imprints going. And there's so much psychic garbage around half the shit we're pardon my language, half the stuff we're hearing. Well, that's OK. We're not a family show. <laughs> OK. Um, our. Uh, are, are just just that and I think there's a lot of different little parasitic beings out there that, that take over a lot of those imprints or at least try and communicate through them and they're networking all this stuff together because I've run into stuff where all kinds of beings were actually uh, linked together from uh, through the solar plexus basically coming out the back with another one attached right to the back of that with another one attached to the back of them with another one attached to the back of them um, so I think they're networking up a bunch of this stuff loose astral bodies, all kinds of stuff, and um, using that to either communicate or using it as a battery or whatever they're they're here doing. But I've been running into all kinds of uh, neat but creepy stuff. <laughs> neat but creepy stuff. That's awesome. That's, wow. Um, gosh, I, I lost my train of thought. I just, a lot of this stuff is things that uh, I don't get a chance to have conversations about too often so in a lot of ways I feel like uh, very interactive in this interview and the, the listeners will pick that up I'm probably I feel stoned right now which is oh, weird I have not but you know I, the digital drug <laughs> yeah yeah um whatever it is it, it's it's pretty cool um Isn't it? yeah it is <laughs> The quality of your life, how do you view that given everything that you've been through? If you could go back, live this life and never have had these experiences, would you do that? Or do you feel like there was 
an acceptable trade-off for you to be able to kind of move into another level? Well, it's acceptable as long as I can now get on with my life because right. I really feel over the last 10 years I haven't been um, the most productive member of society because I've been kept so busy in this mental world where it was, you know, it was impossible to really, you know, have a job or anything like that. So I'm hoping um, that things are uh, on the mend in that way. And uh, I'm really looking to, to get more into the healing aspect because at this time there's so much of this stuff going on and people are unraveling, becoming more and more psychic every day and they're scared and they may not even know it <laughs> because your, your mind picks up stuff that your brain doesn't necessarily pick up on a day-to-day -day basis and it's uh, there's trauma <laughs> out there that yeah. you're not realizing and it's weighing on people. So like guys focusing on etheric hygiene uh, for themselves and for other people are, are, are probably going to be kept fairly busy over the next number of years, I think, doing <laughs> etheric hygiene. I am a, an etheric hygienist. <laughs> well, but, uh, is there a license for that or good? There shouldn't be, but uh, wow. That's ninety five. I'll send you a patch. There you go. <laughs> that's kind of interesting stuff. Um, I, on, on a personal level, you've kind of probably been isolated a lot with this did you have like any support along the way were you able to ever talk about this or did you just kind of live with this in isolation no i tried like the whole psychiatric route early on and it was basically well, like, i meant I, interacting with actual humans not doctors a few healers throughout <laughs> that haven't been able to do anything for yeah. me really. and okay. uh, and then meeting chris in my own city blew my mind because uh he is the etheric hygienist supreme right now in my life. So I'm a, <laughs> I'm a happy cat just knowing the guy because he, he dragged me out of this and, uh, and definitely helped me get grounded. And speaking of grounding, they had actually unhooked my grounding cable, which he helped me rehook uh, and definitely um, uh, got me back down, uh, back down to earth. So, yeah. Explain a little bit about that. And Chris, feel free to jump in here um, if you want to add to this. The exactly the whole grounding process and what that how that works yeah the the, the grounding process um, like everybody talks about being grounded okay are you grounded well well of, of course you are your feet are on the ground but um, what, what we're talking about is an energetic ground and, and uh, there, there's a two-part system to that number one is, is it's the zero chakra which is uh, a chakra located one foot below your feet that that is a chakra that helps to ground you now there's also another connection called the vivaxis and it's an energetic connection that, that starts at the root chakra and it goes through the, the zero chakra and, and it grounds you to the earth. So, so that is something that, that is specifically uh, needed if you're a person who does astral traveling because if you're not grounded, you're going off into this, this astral world, you may not get back. You, you, um, you, you may just uh, uh, not come back at all for 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 uh, lack of a better term but being grounded um it, on an energy level is extremely important now there's also another ground that i work with and that's our ground to to the universe okay or to the creator or to heaven whatever you want to call it and that and that is an area in the hypothalamus in our brain called the well of souls uh -huh. that is your that is your connection to, to 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 the uh to the higher realms of consciousness so you, so you can be grounded up and down so your poles are basically grounded so that that is a, a very important aspect that i work on with everybody is to make sure that that your grounding points are there Excellent. That, that's a great explanation. Boy, there's a lot of data in all of that that I, I've got to wrap my head around. Because uh, I had never thought about it on that level. I was thinking, well, I'm pretty grounded. I go out on Earth almost every day uh, just to get in contact with terra firma. But it's, it's bigger than that. It, it is much bigger than that. And, and it's those just those specific connections are the important ones. Now, if, if there is a demonic figure that is trying to get at you, of course, it's going to try and get at you at, through your ground. So, so that ground could be attached to a different dimension. It could be plugged into a different energy matrix, different energy grid, where, where you think you're grounded in the right spot, but you're, you're really not. And with, with the work that I'm doing, I'm able to find out exactly where it's plugged into, what it's siphoning from is it plugged into a black hole and siphoning all your energy so there's a lot of of things to take into consideration not just are you grounded but where are you grounded to are you grounded to the right place are you grounded in the right dimension there, you know whatever uh, a lot of things to consider 
when you, when you were talking earlier about going astral, I, there are times, and I'm very aware of my sleep states. I do very specific types of meditation and practices that, you know, things I've learned, things I've picked up, things I intuitively do. But I, I've noticed over the last few years that it's more pronounced than in the morning. I'm having a very difficult time sometimes with reentry. Okay, it's possibly that that you need to to reground yourself, and and uh, you know we could easily uh, find that out very quickly if if you're properly grounded. Um, you know, are you traveling uh, in in a different body than your astral body? There's uh, so many things to consider, but we could easily figure that out. Not a problem. One of the best ways I found to get back in is uh, just wiggle your fingers and your toes, and uh, you'll you'll wake up back in your body in about three seconds. I have that sensation. The other thing is that sometimes I don't, I'm not sure I want to come back. I wake up, <laughs> I wake up sometimes and I'm like actually bummed. Uh, that sounds horrible. It sounds, I'm not suicidal. I don't want to die or leave this body. It's just that I'm aware that wherever I've been is someplace very incredible. It, it's very difficult to come back into 3D. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's easier out there than it is here. But we're still in school. It is. We got, it is. We haven't got, gotten our graduation papers yet. So That is an interesting <laughs> analogy, and it's one that I hear a lot. And I hear it especially from people that have had contact experiences, that they're aware of the fact that we are basically in some sort of accelerated uh, course that's, that's teaching us something, that yeah, this is a hard world to live in. It is. Well, we're here for, for one big reason, and, and that is to learn things. Uh, and we're reincarnated all the time because we need to get it right. We need to clear up our karmic debt. A lot of different things come into play as, as to exactly the, the whole reason why, why our silly little humans are here on, on this stinking little planet. What's the whole significance of it? And there's so many different scenarios that fly, but not one of them is definitely uh, to relearn a lesson or to get it right. I have the sense, and since we kind of treaded over into this, this subject, I've had the sense for some time that this cycle that we're in is, and, and don't ask me where I got this, the word penultimate came up, which means next to last. Now, I have a sense about what that means, but maybe you have nothing or maybe you can help me understand this. I have the sense that there's a finality to the cycle that we're in right now, both in terms of the planet galactically and in terms of uh, even certain soul groups that that is something I haven't really come across as, as yet um, there's so many different scenarios that do fly around about the whole the whole thing uh, we watched a video uh, whisper and I and Hayden uh, it's, it's called the lie NASA told and and <laughs> which, one? <laughs> which one which <laughs> one no I have not seen this one yet no, um, uh, it really makes you think uh, again. Uh, I mean, as, as energy people uh, like, like us, we, we think we got a good handle on things and we, we know a lot more than what a lot of other people might know. But then you watch this video and, and it sure puts things way out of proportion as, as to where you think you are and what the universe is all about and what is really going on. So if you want to spin your head around 40 or 50 times and watch this video, the lie NASA told on YouTube is, is pretty incredible. I will have to look at that the Soho up. Space Wars from, uh, from basically 24 or 2007. And then I think it uh, also shows stuff actually happening April of this year. Uh, about different um, different gates and fights for different gates yeah. with yeah. our own solar system. Yeah. yeah, and some of that is information that's kind of been leaking out for a number of years. The idea of the space wars, which actually I think are occurring with almost within our own ionosphere at times, uh, yes. is a reason that 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 information has been leaking out slowly. But there's there's somebody out on the west coast. And I wish I could remember the guy's name now. I got the, the information who was actually able to photograph this using some pretty extraordinary equipment. Yeah, yeah. a lot of those photographs are in that video. Actually. Okay, this is probably the same people that I was in contact with a few years ago. And that's, that's pretty real. I mean, look, you know, 
if you still disbelieve that we're we're not in some kind of war zone here, that certainly brings it all right right home. Absolutely, yeah. uh, like I said about the the war on Saturn. Okay, how how do I know there's a war on Saturn? Okay, uh, my 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 guides start telling me, get, giving me this information. Uh, uh, I, I start working on it within people and removing it, and all of a sudden things change within their physicality and, and their pain goes away. So that makes you believe. Okay, there's got to be something to it. There there is some kind of of uh, etheric war going on, and we're somehow linked and connected to it in, in one way, shape, or form. So. Y- Anything is possible. Give, give me a break. Anything at all is possible when you're thinking about stuff going on in the universe. So, so uh, when you start seeing uh, uh, photographs and video of, of things happening on the sun at, at, at different levels uh, with different filters that they use, well, then, then it sure makes you open your eyes a bit wider and look in a different direction as, as to really what is going on w- within our, our own uh, uh, dimension. Well, you know, it's even the sun. Uh, it's not what we think it is, is it? It's it's we have it as this hot, gaseous ball, but there's actually something much more intricate about the sun itself, as being this the sun that we see. Not even going into the whole secret sun, uh, hidden sun, all the other aspects, the dimensional aspects of the galactics. Yeah, within this within this video, there's a NASA scientist who, who's sitting in his car, and he doesn't want anybody to see that he's being interviewed, and he's talking that if you're not on the planet, you can't see the sun. There is no sun. And they talk about the sun being hollow. What, what I believe the sun is is actually a big chakra, a big portal for, for multidimensional travel. Yes, yeah, and that's actually, I don't know if you've ever seen the work, uh, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there of electromagnetic uh, vehicles, they're like triangular vehicles that um, have been spotted. There's a NASA scientist, Dr. Norman Berggrind, who years ago, this guy's very aged now, uh, but wrote a book about uh, Saturn and these electromechanical vehicles that were being spotted in the rings. Now we got we. It's interesting. You just triggered that whole thing uh, with Saturn, and here we are. We're back at this again. So I guess this needs to just be aired. Um, there's something very trippy going on there. there. There certainly is, and like I said, you look at the wars in the Middle East. You look at all that turmoil, and and that as as above, so below comes right. into play right here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we know the pyramids have got to be point uh, the, not just the pyramids in Egypt, but uh, the the ancient pyramids in south america we we know about grids and we know about ley lines on the earth which all seem to have some sort of mapping system connected to uh the galaxy itself it it exactly is and and you know the 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 universe that everything is all connected in its own way from all the cells within our body that 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 connect us uh, and and build us to what we are to to uh to everything around us is, is we're all connected it, in one way, shape, or form. Uh, Ashiana Dean calls it a partiki grid, um, uh, with all these different geometrical forms all piecing together to to create the entire universe. So the consciousness is actually one, but but separate in its own little way. So uh, that's another aspect, another way to look at it. Wow, we, we, we've certainly managed to rotate the conversation in some pretty interesting <laughs> places, I, I will say that, guys. Hayden, is there anything else uh, you want to share about, I'm sorry, Hayden, not, not Hayden, Whisper. Hayden's sitting in the background, he's, he's the uh, he's the cigar-chomping agent guy, but uh, Whisper, is there anything else you'd like to touch on in terms of your own experiences or expand a little bit on... Uh, the work that you're doing now well basically with the work i'm doing now is um uh is healing work and basically i've just been doing mine for free i've been setting up shop um sort of in like our little Times square and uh, just doing free energy healings for anyone who walks up and uh using a bunch of uh, similar tools to chris or um Tons and tons of different entity attachments seem to be happening with people, and a lot of it's just a etheric cleanup, and you can see their mood change right in front of you once you start doing it. And that's uh, with what I've been through, this unraveling process or becoming more psychic or more aware or whatever you want to call it has been scary as hell. 
and I, I think uh, everyone now is pretty much kind of being forced to have it happen to them. And uh, pe- people are unraveling is what I call it. And, um, and there's, uh, there's sort of an underlying fear behind it because subconsciously you know what's going on even if you're not totally conscious uh, of everything. And uh, I don't know, it's my mission kind of seems to be going in that direction, just helping people through this sort of transitional phase. Because I do think it's going to gonna stabilize. Like as we're moving up in vibration, they're saying we're moving to the fifth dimension. The door on the third dimension is coming to a close. So we're not so much in the past or in the future right. as right. far as our mindset. Right. We're in present time. And as we get closer to the fifth dimension, our aspects of being able to manifest uh, become greater and greater. But right now we're manifesting all kinds of psychic stuff that we're only partially aware of, but we're creating all kinds of uh, rubble out there and uh, it kind of needs to be cleaned up. And the rubble that's sticking to people is basically what I'm sort of making as my mission at the, at this particular point in time. So that's, that's kind of where I am. You know, eventually it's going to be, you want an apple and the apple appears, but right now you want an apple and the apple appears, except you can't see it, but maybe the little ghosty guy beside you sees it. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, that's what we're moving into. Well, you raise an interesting point. People were becoming unraveled and you know, those of us on this call tonight are very out of the box as you know Chris is termed as being very out of the box in his healing techniques but we all are and we're also people that on one level or another kind of you know have experienced being broken and the the unraveling of people the, I, the sickest people I encounter right now are the people who are never going to have the kind of conversation that we're having right now or be aware of even what's going on. Exactly. And yet I have sat across the desk from somebody and watched them go through endless facial tick shifts, energy shifts, face warping, pixelation, all of the stuff that we talked about. Yeah. And yet that person is presented as being perfectly oh. normal. And I know, and this is not a judgment, it is an assessment. I know that that person is dealing with horrific stuff. Absolutely, but it's happening outside of the conscious mind. But you know what? When it happens in your subconscious or your superconscious aspects, somewhere inside you know it's happening. And you know, if you people are miserable because of it, I think. And uh, a lot of the you know you can you know try and dull your yourself down and you know drink as much fluoride, <laughs> fluoride as you can and maybe uh, tune it out. But <laughs> uh, basically. Uh, there's oh, you, you a, see a there's suicide showers popping yeah. up right now and you know I'm kind of I see myself in that role because I've been through a lot and if I sat there and told my story to everybody I'd get a lot of stupid looks but if, uh, if, if someone who's obviously distressed walks up to me and I'm sitting in a circle and uh, I can uh, clean up their aura and balance out their chakra system and send them on their way and they throw me a cigarette or buy me a coffee. I'm a happy cat right now. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. So, yeah. Well, I don't think there's going to be enough healers for the cleanup crew as this thing finally does kick in. I mean, I don't know what it's going to look like. I have, kind of a premonition about things but I can tell you that based on what I see day to day every person who can get healed and then become a healer is going to be an asset overall to the entire planet because the breakdown of humanity is just profound now I mean suicides are off the scale murders um, massive amounts of really horrible drug use uh You see it in the culture itself and the way the culture has been debauched. Right. And so, you know, for people who are going through this and, you know, this audience will relate to this pretty well. We all probably need to step up our game a little bit right now. Absolutely. Every family needs a healer. And there's usually one freaky or one that's going to, you know, take it on. Yeah. And now it's the freaks you got to look at, man. It's the normal people that are, they're in for a world of hurt right now, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. The times they are a-changing. Yeah. 
Well, I think we've kind of gone around the the whole spectrum of things that we wanted to talk talk about tonight. If anybody has anything else they want to be bring up, be heard saying, uh, please chime in at this point. Here, here's here's what I tell everybody. Okay, um, there's a lot of information that's that's being talked about tonight, and how do you know what what's true how do you know what what's real how do you know what what's really out there what i always tell everybody is think with your heart feel yeah. with your heart don't try and logically try to uh, evaluate everything mm-hmm. if it feels good in your heart then it is and and that's not the same for everybody everybody's going to be different in their own ascension in their own consciousness about different things when i work on different people uh with the same problems it's all for different reasons so if you need to decide if something is right for you think with your heart does it feel good in your heart yes it does then go for it absolutely perfect uh Chris, I want to thank you for uh, coming on tonight and uh, sharing all of the things that you're doing, your services that are out there. The website, again, is chriskaler.net. And uh, Chris has uh, all of his services up there, how you can contact him. Geez, I'm impressed that you can schedule your own appointment. Try that at a medical <laughs> facility. That's awesome. And uh, Whisper, uh, look, this was a, a brave move. Even though you're using an anonymous name tonight, you've put your voice out there. And uh, I know the power of the resonance of the voice. You have uh, placed a testimony on the record that people are going to hear as we put this out. And I want to thank you. I salute you for stepping forward and sharing your story and being absolutely uh, open and amazingly honest. And yet at the same time, charmingly freaky. I love it. <laughs> Charmingly freaky. <laughs> and Hayden, Hayden, I know you're sitting back there. Thanks a lot for for hooking up the wires, for getting us all together tonight. This this is a fun conversation. I really, really, really enjoyed it. It was spirited, wasn't it? It was. It was excellent. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap it up. This has been Off Planet Radio. Uh, you can find us at offplanetradio.com, offplanetradio.net. Uh, we're stabilizing websites, too, by the way. That's been in drift for way too long now. But by this weekend, we'll be all plugged back in. And you can just go to offplanetradio.com. I'm Randy Moggins. The truth is out there. It's inside you. You better start looking for it now. It's about to get weird. Bye-bye. You are listening to Off Planet Radio at offplanetradio.net and offplanetradio.com. They run in biz like a cellular prepaid. No matter, I spent that sick ill shit to thrill you, teach you. Then I get shy, holla by, hop a plane and meditate on the mountains of Machu Picchu. Splitting room fees with my doppelganger, look it up. Don't want a war with the constantly mongos. I beat the bass while you pit a pat of bongos. Better act like you no kid, I got the flow kid. Type of nigga that I gas a dude up, set him off and then show him the brakes like Curtis Blow did. Gravity, uh, it's all the it's all the it's all the it's all the Turn me up, son. DGB be the reason the speakers going boom, bitch. Tweaking on my people, you geeks to be leaving toothless. Ruthless, I ruin the boots and I leave it useless. Prosthetic the regiment, gravity's the movement. Smooth shit, the instrumental is a pendulum swinging and bringing the lyrics to fruition. The revolution of rappers and producers. Who'd rather hit static than another natic with maggots and battles just like a doofus? The niggas is fictitious, they spitting ignorant nonsense. Our lyrics are delicious, so listen to legit bomb shit. DGV and Fizzle, the illest without a contract. Sicker vision than a nigga with syphilis contract. Gravity, it's all the yeah. Gravity, it's all the